the What to Read Next podcast helps you build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lori and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they loved for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next free read, then the show. Hi, Rizal. Welcome to What to Read Next podcast. Hi, Laura. Thank you so much for having me. So happy to have you here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I write um, adult books right now. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get into YA, but for adults, it's um, books about food and family and uh, basically generational relationships and with a dash of magic. And when I say magic, I mean fabulism, contemporary magic. Yes, I love your books are like the perfect escape for someone who just needs like a little bit of like magic back in your life you know so so let's chat about Sophie Goes Lonely Hearts Club what is the elevator pitch the elevator pitch is a disgraced mask maker needs to match seven septuagenarian bachelors to save her reputation (laughs) so thinking about like the characters what came first the characters the plot you know the world in this case, at least for the last three books, it's always been a menu. I start with a menu before I write a book. And that probably doesn't surprise you if you've read my books. Yeah. And for this particular book, my menu was all of my childhood snacks and candies. And I wanted to write that. And the reason why is because I wanted to write um, a love letter to my grandparents. And I'm thinking about all of those the sweets and the chips and all of the pocky and all of that that I ate. And that's how it started. And then um, what I ended up writing is basically like a male version of the Golden Girls, if you read read the book. Yeah. Oh, I love this idea of a menu. And so what kind of menus do you insert? Like, how do you, like, this one you have as a childhood, but other menus where there's something you just, like, saw in the street or like you know you had a meal you're like oh my gosh this is like what do you need to have the first book that I wrote um the menu for that is a lot of the dishes that my comfort dishes stuff that my parents and my dad cooked it's my dad's to cook in the family Mm -hmm. that's the list of that that's just all of my favorite dishes that he's made the second book the one that's based in Paris was basically everything I ate in Paris and I ate a lot and that city is just wonderful when it comes to food so I made a list of all of that and I made sure that I went to the city like I've never been until my editor uh, an editor and my agent suggested just take a bit of your book advance and go just go visit the city you've always wanted to go go use it as a research trip and I really did I used it as a research trip I ate everything I walked everywhere and it was just fantastic oh my gosh and trips that you want to plan I know you mentioned before that you're headed to Disney um but other trips now that you're like oh world's opening up and menus can be you know it is I've got culinary novels that I have that I want to write still yeah like that that are food heavy and the other places I want to go that's on my immediate list is I want to visit um Scotland and Ireland Mm -hmm. that's only after going back to Paris landing in Paris staying there for a few days to eat and then taking the train train to London staying there for a few days to eat and then actually going on this (laughs) to go see everything um I want to go there I eventually want to go back to the Philippines and to Japan but my family I have a daughter and she's never been to the place I was born like to the country that I born I've been born in and my husband's never seen um yeah. have never been there either and it's just a matter of tranquilizing them for the 22 hour flight to get there and and then to go to Japan after cuz I have to see studio yes in addition to the beautiful cultural things I got to go to studio ghibli the park yeah. <laughs> and Tokyo Disneyland, even though, and the Sanrio land. I'm sorry. I do like my amusement park. So, yes, but I visit um, those places. My brother went to Japan and he did go to Tokyo Disney World. Like, that was like a stop. Hit, my brother's going on a trip to go to all the different Disney worlds around the world. Like, he's trying to hit them just to, you know, to explain. have a wish list because the swag in Tokyo Disney, like the merchandise there is just so much cuter than anywhere else. Yeah. 
So you should ask him to pack you a little thing to just mail it back yeah. because from what I've seen, it's just so much cuter. Yes. Oh. Oh my gosh, I love this. I would suggest if you're looking for culinary stuff, I would suggest going to Lisbon and go to Spain. Oh. Try the Spanish stuff, like top. Oh, up, definitely. The Lisbon has this like Ed Custer little pasta de natas. I think they have like Chinese version of it. It's like a little. Oh egg- yes, I've had the Portuguese ver. I've had the Portuguese version because where I live right now, there's a high uh, population of Portuguese. Yep. So that yes, we have the egg tarts, pastel de There's a bakery downtown that's like a Portuguese yeah. bakery. I would go there. I will go there and I will eat. Yes, I would tell you it's beautiful. I think Lisbon is like similar to San Francisco, so it will give you that San Francisco vibes. But at the same time, the food is delicious. You know, if I go to Portugal, I definitely need to make like a side trip to the Azores. Yeah, that's, that's on my list too. <laughs> yes you know like honestly we just need to travel like you know travel and eat our way in it like that's like my favorite thing is to travel like one of my favorite trips is to go solo trips by myself and get and sign up for a food tour so then i just like yeah. have someone walk me through different restaurants and just eat and go eat and go and then it is and to bring it back to books this is what i love so much about books that it allows you to travel and it allows you to experience foods in different places and different mm-hmm. situations that you may like not normally be in or want to be in. Yeah. So, oh, all right. So in terms of books, like what kind of books do you tend to read and tend to gravitate when it comes to reading? Um, mostly fiction, mm-hmm. but I will do the occasional nonfiction. <clears throat> um. The three books that I really like that I've that's kind of been in the forefront of my brain in the last few years is Circe by Madeline Miller because I'm such a sucker for Greek mythology. Yeah. And I I know definitely down the road I will be writing something yeah. along those lines. But I, I love that book just because it's from a female point of view. Mm-hmm. And that it's so it's so atmospheric and it's about a character that I do love like Circe and what her backstory is and you know how she was born from like her parents were titans it's just and and then if I believe and it's just such a beautiful kind of just fantastical that has like a bit of a literary fiction tilt to it Mm -hmm. the other book that I really loved in the last few years is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. It's one of my favorite romance novels. And how do you not love Michael and Stella and like the pretty woman trope, just gender bent. Like it's just, it's one of the spiciest. I love that too. It's one of the spiciest novels I've read and absolutely adore that. And another book that I loved and who happens to be a friend of mine as well is uh, So We Meet Again by Suzanne Park. And it's a foodie a foodie yeah. book like Suzanne writes about food and she writes about humor and she always makes me laugh and I love that quality about her books as well yes I I told Suzanne that I wanted that service that the the, the main character so we meet again who was doing the different sauces and yeah. spice off for those meal boxes I was like why that doesn't exist like I need that service <laughs> you know <laughs> and the relationship with the mom and the YouTube video yes like you got yes it. You're like, I'm like, yes. Oh my gosh, I appreciate. It. <laughs> so, yes. Oh, so many good books. So, Roselle, tell us where we can find you online. I am at Roselle Writer on IG and on Twitter. Now, I used to be a lot more active, mm-hmm. but I've been pulling back a little bit because I'm a little bit under stress. I'm a little bit under stress because right now I am on submission. I am on. <laughs> I have launch coming up for Sophie. And yeah. book four, book four edits are coming in, and and if you want to know a little bit about book four, I could tell you about book four oh, because it's do. it's not at all set in the universe that Sophie, Natalie, and Vanessa are in. Oh my gosh! So big yeah. shocker, right? Yeah. This book four is more along the fantasy romance vein, and mm-hmm. that it has gods, ghosts, and it has two exes that are trapped in trapped in two places and have to work together separately to try to get out it's got a bit of a a fantastical escape room element to it as well oh my gosh that sounds so good now i just need to have it (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> that sounds so good. I'm like fantastical escape room. Yes, give me that. Yes, with gods and ghosts. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, that sounds so good. So that's coming out next year or I don't have a release date for it yet. I know, yes, like I said, book ed- book four editor is supposed to be coming in and yeah. I'm hoping it's sometime yeah. next year and hopefully what happens with the YA. I wrote a culinary fantasy for YA and I'm hoping that gets turned into a book and yeah. I can talk about that some more as well. Oh my gosh, I'm excited for you. This is great and congratulations on your success. So it's been amazing. <laughs> so thank you Rosal, for being in the show. Thank you so much, Laura, for having me. It's so fun talking about food and tangent, you know, food, but mostly books. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. For a list of books mentioned and other romance recommendations, please visit whatchwernextblog.com. Did you know you can purchase audiobooks directly from your favorite local bookstore? With Librafem, you can pick up more than 250,000 audiobooks, including bestsellers and recommendations from real booksellers. You'll get the same audiobooks at the same price as the largest audiobook company, you know the name, but you'll be part of a different story, one that supports the local community. If you're new to audiobooks, there's a perfect way to squeeze more reading into your busy life. Listen with the free LibreFM app while you do your chores, walk the dog, relax at home. If you already love audiobooks and don't know what to listen next, check out recommendations from people who know the best booksellers. The Watch Your Next podcast has a special offer for our listeners. Get two audiobooks on LibreFM for the price of one with your first month membership. Use code WHATCHYOURWEEKNEXT. The offer is valid only for new members in Canada and the U.S. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.